is totalitarianism. And it came to us courtesy of Twitter, Facebook, and Google. Back in a minute. Rock and Roll Friday on the one and only Savage Nation. Many of you have become so addicted to the sounds of the show that when I open my show, if I don't open with um, Blue Monday on Monday, something's wrong in your life. If I don't close Friday out with Rock and Roll Friday, the week isn't complete. We need consistency in our life. And I try to give you that consistency. And I, if I sound different, I'm not really different. But the world is a different place than it was even a year ago. Not just for me. I mean for the country. Things have changed. The bombs going off at the same time this lunatic is bringing them in. I mean, let's be clear. This is what's upsetting us. You've got one particular group that wants to take over the whole world. They sell it around the religion. And instead of stopping the importation of folks from this group that seem to have an awful lot of people in that group who set off bombs, kill people, etc. Instead of saying, wait, we shouldn't bring more of them in right now because we really are in trouble with those who are here already. We don't know. Instead, he says he wants to bring in 10,000, 100,000, 300,000 Syrian men of military age. And no one can believe that he keeps getting away with this stuff. He goes on. He gives a speech about guns that we know is illegal. A president cannot make law. He knows that better than you do the man is out of control he's a raging out of control man and i think it's it's scaring people especially people who listen to talk radio let me be specific it's not scaring the average joe and jane college kid they don't know what's going on they never did they never will the average one it's not scaring the far left fanatics who hate the society okay i can go down the list but those of you who listen to shows like this Feel the dimness. That's what I'm getting at. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Music. I'm not in the music world right now. Listen, the denial of what the problem is is the real problem. A Muslim shoots a cop in Philadelphia last night. He shoots him in the name of Islam. We know it's true. Why? Because the police commissioner says the suspect gave a full confession, boasting that he shot the cop in the name of Islam. According to the police commissioner, the shooter said that police bend laws that are contrary to the teaching of the Quran, so he's justified in killing them. He's a stone-hearted murderer who wrapped himself in a religion, probably a jailhouse convert. They have a full confession of the alleged attack written down and recorded, and yet you're not going to believe what I'm going to play for you. The mayor goes on the air and says the following in complete denial of reality. In no way, shape, or form does anyone in this room believe that Islam or the teaching of Islam has anything to do with what you've seen on that screen. That is abhorrent. It's, it's just it's terrible, and it does not represent the religion in any way, shape, or form or any of its teachings. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is a criminal uh, with, a, with a stolen gun who tried to kill one of our officers. It has nothing to do with being a Muslim or following the Islamic faith. How does he know that? The man said he did it in the name of Islam. The man who shot the cop said he did it in the name of Islam. He confessed to committing this cowardly act in the name of Islam, according to Richard Ross Jr., the city's police commissioner. 30-year-old jailbird did it, walked up to the cop and shot him through the window. The shooter said uh, he was pledging allegiance to the Islamic State, known as ISIS. Now, why would the mayor bend over backwards with this propaganda, the same propaganda that comes out of Obama's mouth, the same propaganda that comes out of Merkel's mouth. Why do they continuously act in denial of reality? Why? 
Why must they always sweep it under the rug? Can anyone explain that to me? Don't bother. We know why. Now he's saying this is a criminal with a stolen gun? Yeah, of course. Sure, it's a criminal with a stolen gun who shot a cop in the name of a certain religion and pledged loyalty to ISIS. Now, how does it help us for you to know that? Should I not mention it? Am I, am I hurting the social fabric by mentioning the reality of what actually transpired? Or would you think that America would be a better place if I censored myself and did not tell you the relationship to Islam or to ISIS? You think about it. Because Faisalberg, Twitterberg, and Googleberg shut down all opposition in Germany. Anyone who posts anything about the rapes that went on in Germany over New Year's Eve, and there were a massive number of them, is being shut down by Facebook, Google, and Twitter. The very same buccaneers who will not stop the recruitment of ISIS by ISIS using uh, their, their uh, outlets had no trouble shutting off opposition to immigrants in Germany. Do you understand what's happening? Do you know why I say the lights are getting dimmer? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So we're in real trouble. We have images of the shooter running across the street, released by police, so we know who did it. You see the man wearing a white robe, no less. Now, what was he wearing a white robe from? for? Would he just come from a bakery? No, that was his Allah Akbar robe. He didn't just come from an ice cream plant. In these images, a man wearing a white robe over his clothing, running through the crosswalk toward a police cruiser with his hand outstretched, pointing a gun. It's stunning. He fires at the cop through the window, and the cop is so good he fires back. Well, anyway, you get the picture. The shooter's mother, Valerie Holiday, told the Philly Inquirer that her son was a devout Muslim, a devout Muslim. Mother even said it. So we don't have to notice this. I mean, we can we can sweep it under the rug. We can keep sweeping it under the rug for how long? How long? How many years do we sweep it under the rug? What until Obama brings three hundred thousand in, amongst whom there is what three thousand nuts like this? So that's why we have to talk about it. I'm not doing this for uh, any other reason. I'm as concerned as you are. I'm as worried as you are. Because I think if we let the lunatic in the White House get away with his big lies over and over and over again, and we don't challenge the liar in the White House, and we let the liar in the White House flood us with 300,000 or whatever men of military age from Syria, it'll be too late. I think that the police will be overwhelmed. I think the security services will be overwhelmed. And then on top of it all, he wants to limit your access to a gun. It's very easy to fall into a conspiracy theory, theory when you have a maniac like this in the White House, especially at times like this. Don't you think? Or am I overreacting? You think I'm overreacting? You think I'm being alarmist? Is that the problem? If men like me didn't even mention it, it'd be a better country? If we just left these things alone and let the uh, people shoot cops and say they're doing it in the name of this, the name of that? You get the picture. I don't have to go on and on about it. WSBA Radio, Mike, I think you're going to say what I just said, but go ahead and say it anyway. Sure, uh, Michael, thank you. Uh, I just want to say that uh, Mayor Michael Nutter not only acts like Obama and looks like Obama, but uh, he didn't even ask, have the decency to inquire how the police officer was doing. He was so... Why would he come out immediately and say it had nothing to do with Islam when the guy who did it said it, he had it to do, he did it in the name of Islam? Why would he bend over backwards to sweep that under the rug? Is he a Muslim, the mayor? Uh, he sure sounds like one, and he's an he's, as you would say, Islamophilic. But uh, you know, it, it's just yeah, it's a good word, right? I used that years ago. Uh, Islamophilia, Islamophobia. Yeah, it's a good word. I gotta give you the credit. Uh, Islamophilic. That's a good word. We are, we have an awful lot of Islamophilics in the government and the media, don't we? Yeah, uh, Why are so many of them Christophobic but Islamophilic? I wonder. What's that about? Why do they eschew the religion of their own family and their own background and yet embrace that of uh, others who uh, don't really like them very much? What is that about? Well, okay, you can say it's the Stockholm syndrome. You could say it's appeasing an electorate that they need. Who knows what the reasons are? All right, Mike, it's a very sad day when such propaganda passes uh, for the truth. 
WABC, New York City. Ray, thank you for calling. What's your point? What's your topic? Oh, my topic is on the light of dimming. Thank you for uh, taking my call. And, um, you know, I'm a retired Marine, and there's thousands of Marines on Long Island just alone who the fire burns bright, as you can imagine. But I understand why you feel that way. And we never thought that the, the biggest fear and the biggest uh, enemy to the world and to our country would be our own president. And we talk about it all the time in the American Legion and the Marine Corps League. And we're prepared to keep our oaths that we never relinquished uh, when we joined the Marine Corps to defend our country against foreign and domestic foes. And we're prepared for it, you know, if that's what he wants. That, that is really, a, you know, you just gave a speech that is so amazing in what you said. There's no commentary possible. It's like the Bible sometimes had commentary written about it. But there are certain things in the Bible that are so true that there's no need for commentary. What you just said is very important to hear. But you feel that the government certainly is a threat to our freedoms, is what you're saying, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. I fear... So let me ask you, we have all these retired military uh, armed to the teeth. We have retired cops armed to the teeth. They're fuming. They're burning inside. They don't know what to do. So what? what is there to do in this country to stop this lunatic? Well, unfortunately, you know, our elected officials in the Republican Party and the Conservative Party keep kowtowing to them. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm as befuddled as you are when it comes to the, the power that he's wielding and nobody is pushing back against him. It's, it's astounding to me. I don't understand it. And, it, uh, and I understand why you feel the way the light is dimming, but I, I fear for our country uh, in general. And I will never relinquish my firearms, nor will the thousands of Marines that I know on this island release their firearms. Because You know, you're, you're raising the firearm issue, and I, I, try to, I wanted to avoid it today because it's an obvious topic because of Obama's desire to seize our weapons, to, despite what he says. Let me ask you this. He says that it's impossible to deport... 11 or 33 million illegal aliens that could never be done even if we wanted to do it, right? Isn't that the standard mantra of the left? Oh, you can't deport 11 million. We know it's more like 33 million or 50 million. But let's take a number of 30 million. Oh, you can't deport all those 30 million illegal aliens? It, it's technically impossible. Well, how could he seize 100 million guns? How is that possible? You know, he's, he's a walking contradiction, and I... Just, I absolutely do not believe he has our country's best interest in any. Well, that's a given. I don't even have to debate it with you. I don't think anything he's done is in the interest of America. But nevertheless, having said that, we have a year left, almost a year left. Remember, he doesn't leave office till next January. He doesn't leave at the time of the election. And you watch what he gets away with if Trump wins. You watch and see what he does between November and January. That's the real action is going to be in those two months. But uh, what do you think he will do next, this lunatic? The horrifying terror that scares me to my core and everything that I believe in and was willing to fight and die for in the Marines. It, it, it just, I, I'm, I'm disgusted by it. Like I no, said, no, but I asked you, what do you think he's going to do next to take away any of our liberties? What, what would he do next? Uh, yeah, like, you know, you know, we know he wants the guns. He, he made a play for the guns, and he's holding on to that one. But what's next is the question. Well, uh, you know, he had the press in his pocket, so I don't know what else he could do uh, unless, uh, unless the, uh, they stop our uh, opposition in Facebook and Twitter and social media. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. The Second Amendment, when they came for the Second Amendment, you said nothing, you liberals, because you don't own any guns. But when they came for the First Amendment, there was no one left to defend you. And that's what's coming next. He is going to go to Googleberg, Twitterberg, and Faisalberg. And he's going to tell them to take down any posts that are inflammatory towards immigrants or Muslims, just as they just did in Germany. He will do that next as I'm standing here. That is coming tomorrow. And I don't mean tomorrow literally. It is coming. That is where he's going. One amendment at a time. Right down the list. Now, why wouldn't he do it? Who's going to stop him? Faisalberg needs the relationship with the government. Faisalberg will do anything, that quizzling, for another buck. Or the Twitter woman.
or the Google boys who are in his pocket. They're friends. Do you know how close Google is with the Obamas and the Pelosi's? Do you know that it's 